Hello, peace everyone, welcome. Uh, Paul DuPont here again for Hardlines Media. I wanted to continue on to what Kit said earlier today um, and talk about the arrest of Julian Assange, the implications of that arrest, uh, what we will likely begin hearing in the next days and weeks, particularly from mainstream press, um, and how I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the analysis around what's happening with Julian Assange is going to contain a lot of spin. It's going to try and push a narrative that really doesn't appear to be what is actually going on. So let's go ahead and dive in a little bit. Uh, if you guys know me, you know I like The Intercept, so let's go uh, to The Intercept. They had uh, really good uh, coverage throughout the day as, uh, as things evolved. Uh, in this particular story, so here's their headline there, is Julian Assange arrested in London after Ecuador withdraws asylum. U.S. requests extradition. So that's exactly what happened. Uh, there's the image that we use here for the, ooh, that's blinking weird, there's the image we use for the, the video. Um, so yeah, Julian Assange, uh, the founder, uh, the WikiLeaks founder, was arrested on Thursday inside of Ecuador's embassy in London, where he had lived since 2012 under diplomatic protection. London's Metropolitan Police Service said in a statement its officers were invited into the embassy by the ambassador following the Ecuadorian government's withdrawal of asylum. So yeah, they basically went in there uh, and uh, collected him. There's an interesting video. We'll watch a touch of it here. This is what it looked like with him uh, getting dragged out. This is what it looks like when you've been in an embassy this many years and they physically drag you out. Uh, that's it. So the this image, particularly one right there where you can see his face clearly, and for that one moment is what got widely shared. Um, the rest of the video is kind of, you know, can't really see what's going on. Uh, so let's just work this a little bit right here again. That's just the moment. He's coming right out there. Um, been growing a beard. I know a thing or two about growing beards. He, uh, he looks like he's been under quite a lot of stress for a long time. Now, again, we reported over the weekend that, uh, that WikiLeaks had made a statement saying that they expected that to happen at any moment, and indeed it did. Um, so uh, Assange's lawyer, uh, Jennifer Robinson, tweeted that he had been arrested not just for breach of bail conditions in the United Kingdom, but also in relation to an American extradition request, apparently citing... Uh, Assange himself as the source. Um, the lawyer said the warrant was for allegedly conspiring with Chelsea Manning to leak documents in 2010. So that's a bit that I want to touch on, is that there's a lot of confusion about why he was arrested, what's going on with that. Um, I hear, I'm hearing a lot of people uh, still remembering that uh, he had charges against him, uh, sexual misconduct and rape allegations against him, uh, and those charges were brought um, or were being prepared to be brought in Sweden. Uh, that investi investigation was ultimately dropped. Uh, Swedish investigators were invited repeatedly to interview Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. But he did not go to that hearing in Sweden. Uh, to It doesn't appear that he did that to avoid um, the rape charges or rape allegations. Um, his stated reason for not going is he felt that that particular charge and that particular investigation, um, which he vehemently denies having raped anyone or in, been involved in sexual misconduct, uh, he feels that those charges were a pretext a, to getting him arrested and extradited to the United States for these disclosures in 2010. So I feel like there are two things that kind of get wrapped up together. There are the folks that are like, oh, it's the rape allegations. He's a raper. He's a rapist. Which... We don't really have enough public evidence to, to you know, say that of him yet. Uh, he certainly denies those allegations, but also, more importantly, people forget um, that this all really centers around Chelsea Manning's leaked documents in 2010. Um, Chelsea Manning, then Bradley Manning, uh, was uh, a member of the military with relatively high top secret clearance, and. Uh, came across a large number of documents showing definitive proof of uh, war crimes that the United States was committing uh, in Afghanistan, uh, and I believe in Iraq as well, and gave a series of document dumps to WikiLeaks, 
which they vetted, made sure they were accurate, um, indexed, and then published. That's what primarily the United States government is mad about when it comes to Julian Assange. Um, it will often be said that uh, what they're that they're really getting them for working with the Russians uh, to hack the the DNC and Podesta emails during the 2016 campaign. That isn't true. These charges that um, we can see were being compiled in the United States long before that incident happened clearly have to do with the 2010 disclosures that the U.S. government is certainly not happy about. Uh, anyway, so uh, Jen Robinson is saying that there that this is not just um, for the breach of the bail conditions. Remember now he's being arrested for not appearing in court for a case that no longer exists and for uh, to um, uh, to extradite into the United States, like that um, in relation to an extradition request. So they're, they're actually arresting with that as part of the arrest, which is a little bit uh, amazing in and of itself. Now, uh, we move down a little bit. A subsequent police statement confirmed that Assange was further arrested on behalf of the United States authorities at 10.53 hours after his arrival into the central London police station. This extradition uh, warrant under Section 73 of the Extradition Act. Yeah. So, yes, he's being arrested to send him to America so that we can try him here because he did inconvenient things that the government didn't like. Assange is 47. Um, he's taken from a central London police station uh, to Westminster Magistrates Court to face, uh, to force, uh, sorry, the force explained that it acted initially on a warrant issued by that court after Assange, Assange took refuge in the embassy in 2012, violating bail conditions by not attending the hearing uh, on his attempt to resist extradition to Sweden, um, where he was wanted for questioning on sexual misconduct allegations leveled against him by two women. Um, so that is what we were talking about earlier. Uh, again, that investigation had the ability to continue. The uh, WikiLeaks and Assange were very uh, repeatedly very open about the fact that they, uh, Swedish investigators were welcome to come to the embassy and interview him, uh, but he would not be appearing in court in Sweden for fear that leaving the embassy would mean that he would be arrested and extradited to the United States. Um, all of this was on uh, was basically because he had been granted asylum by Ecuador. Um, uh, let me skip this a little bit. Have, there's the U.S. attorney, EDVA, bragging about it. Julian Assange found a WikiLeaks charged in computer hacking conspiracy. So that's what they're getting him on is, is conspiracy as well. So they're, that's the, or they're trying to get him on. Because uh, you have the, what they used to call, or what the Obama administration apparently called the New York Times problem, which is he, here is someone who... Uh, knows that the documents that he were given were obtained illicitly, but he knows that it's true information and that it's newsworthy, and therefore he published it. The New York Times also published this information. The Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, major newspapers also published this information. So if you're going to prosecute someone for publishing things that are true, that they know were obtained illegally, isn't that, if you ever saw the movie The Post, right, Nixon, the Nixon tapes, like that's what that was about. How do you prosecute someone for the thing that we uphold as a, as a free speech, freedom of press right in this country and not also go after the New York Times for doing the same thing? So what they're getting them on is uh, communications that appear to be um, what, they, what the NSA was able to collect that says, uh, oh, well, he was helping Chelsea Manning uh, break passwords. Um, I'm sure security experts are looking at this going, this is, this is silly, but these communications that you're talking about happened well after Chelsea Manning was given, uh, was giving him all kinds of documents and that there doesn't appear, like somebody talking about a password is not tantamount to someone assisting in hacking. That, that, uh. The other thing that they're pointing to is an interesting exchange um, where they're saying that Julian Assange is actively encouraging someone to break the law and steal these documents. And the exchange was uh, Chelsea Manning, then Bradley Manning's, one of her last communications with Assange was this, something like, this will be one of my, this will be my last upload. I don't think there's any more I can get. 
And uh, Julian Assange's reply was, um, curious eyes are always hungry. So they're going to take the phrase, curious eyes are always hungry, to mean he was actively telling her to continue breaking the law and give him more stuff. Not to say, well, if you happen to have anything else, you know we're always interested. They're just taking a, taking kind of a cutesy phrase and grafting onto it their own meaning. And that's how they're going to try and get Julian Assange on a conspiracy to, uh, to steal information from the U.S. government, um, which is a, sort of a travesty. Uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, this was something in this article. This is this entire article is very good. It talks a lot about what I'm talking about and goes sort of step by step through what happened today. Um, corruption investigation opened against Ecuador's President Moreno after purported leaked uh, contents of his iPhone and Gmail were published. The New York Times reported that Moreno tried to sell Assange uh, to U.S. for debt relief. So Moreno is the new president in uh, Ecuador and has been playing ball with the United States a lot. And uh, one of the things is this is what they this is what they tried to use as precedent for uh he he broke his asylum agreement. He he agreed that he wouldn't be investigating Ecuador. Okay, well, I'm sorry. WikiLeaks the company posted publicly available information that prior was reported in the New York Times and they're saying that that is uh, Julian Assange investigating Ecuador and that's why they have the right to remove his asylum. Here's a photo from today. Uh, got the thumbs up from Julian Assange. Um, Guy Falconbridge says Julian Assange, the best picture so far by Reuters. Reuters. PBA Nichols, thumbs up in handcuffs. Julian Assange leaves police station for court. Uh, so he did end up in that Westminster court and did plead not guilty uh, to the charge of skipping bail. Uh, I don't know if I skipped past that already. Um, this was an interesting point that uh, Edward Snowden has been making, uh, is that the United Nations uh, Human Rights Committee has been saying for quite some time uh, that Julian Assange's detention, essentially, in the Ecuadorian embassy is what they call arbitrary, and it's an affront on his human right to freedom. Uh, I actually have that article here. If you want to have a look, quick look at it, it's, a, it's really an excellent uh, article. UN experts urge UK to honor the, uh, rights obligations and let Mr. Julian Assange leave Ecuadorian embassy in London freely. Um, so the UN human rights experts today repeated a demand uh, that the UK abides by its international obligations and immediately allows WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to walk uh, free from his home in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he has been for over six years. So this is a, this is a little bit of a while ago that this was published, but they have repeatedly been been saying, "Look, you shouldn't detain this person here. He is trapped." And they're like, "We're not detaining him. We're not detaining him. We're not. He's he's there of his own free will. If he leaves, we're going to arrest him and send him to the United States. But we're not. We're not." We're not. Um, there, it's so disingenuous. I actually kind of want to get to that. Let me skip past this a little bit. Some of the response, um, uh, this guy, uh, is a BBC guy, Julian Assange is not a hero. He is hidden from the truth for years and years. Uh, what truth is he hiding from? That, what are you talking about? Uh, the UK Foreign Secretary, uh, Jeremy Hunt, that's the UK Foreign Secretary, that's right, uh, told the BBC, it's not so much Julian Assange being held hostage in the Ecuadorian embassy, it's actually Julian Assange holding the Ecuadorian embassy hostage in a situation that was absolutely intolerable for them. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. People can be held hostage. Inanimate objects, like buildings that are incapable of moving, aren't things that can be held hostage. They just aren't. Are you saying he's putting Ecuador in an awkward position? Are you saying he's putting the embassy workers or the ambassador in an awkward position? He's not holding anyone hostage. That's dumb. Uh, but this is the way that they have to spin it, is, like, is to gaslight the other person. We've been forcibly making it so that this person can't leave this embassy for over seven years. 
So how can we mock Machiavelli this and say that we weren't doing the thing that we were obviously doing? He was doing it. He was, he's holding our embassy hostage. Stupid. Um, Julian Assange is no hero. That's the quote I just read. Um, this will now be decided properly independently by the British legal system respected throughout the world for its independence and integrity, Hunt added. In a statement uh, to the media after the hearing, uh, I don't know how exactly how to pronounce this, Kristen Rafsnan, uh, the current editor of, of WikiLeaks said, uh, if the U.S. prosecutors charge that Assange uh, was guilty of conspiracy, it's a conspiracy to commit journalism. That's a correct statement, right? Um, so his lawyer, Jen Robinson, uh, said that she and Assange had been uh, correct to warn that the U.S. would try to prosecute uh, him for publishing the Manning leaks in 2010. Let's have a look at this video. It's a really excellent statement. I'm just going to pop it up real quick. Uh, Ooh, I don't know if you can hear that. Let me, let me see if I can make you let it get it so that you can hear that. Since 2010, we've warned that Julian Assange would face prosecution and extradition to the United States for his publishing activities with WikiLeaks. Unfortunately, today, we've been proven right. Mr. Assange was arrested this morning at about 10 o'clock at the Ecuadorian Embassy after the ambassador formally notified him that his asylum would be revoked, and he was arrested by British police. We've today received a warrant and a provisional extradition request from the United States alleging that he has committed conspired with Chelsea Manning in relation to the materials that were published by WikiLeaks in 2010. This sets a dangerous precedent for all media organisations and journalists in Europe and elsewhere around the world. This precedent means that any journalist can be extradited for prosecution in the United States for having published truthful information about the United States. That's a little bit insane, uh, and then it's an excellent quote. It sets a dangerous precedent that any journalist can be extradited for prosecution in the United States for having published truthful information about the U.S. <sighs> Powerful words. A couple of interesting uh, sub-points that uh, showed up here um, that I thought were kind of neat. Um, it was not lost on the press that uh, Trump has been going, went around during the campaign sort of ad nauseum talking about how much he loved WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is so great. That was the new WikiLeaks. Um, but when asked today on ABC News, do you still love WikiLeaks? Trump cast himself uh, as detached bystander. I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. I know nothing uh, really about him. It's not my deal in life, Trump added. I don't really have any opinion. Uh, and, that, and this is just, he just talks out of both sides of his mouth for just whatever it, it is convenient. Um, yeah, here we go. I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. And uh, I know there is something having to do with uh, Julian Assange. I, I've been seeing what's happened with uh, Assange, and uh, that will be a determination, I would imagine, mostly by the Attorney General, who's doing an excellent job. So he'll be making a uh, determination. I know nothing really about him. It's not my, it's not my deal in life. What would you like to see happen? I don't, I don't really have any opinion. I know the Attorney General uh, will be involved in that, and he'll make a decision. Yep, there you have it. Uh, this is something that I'm going to keep an eye on and focus. What, what are the next things? What happens next? I don't know how long he'll be held uh, in London, but we should expect to see him make his way to the U.S. somewhat soon. Now, in relation to this, of course, Chelsea Manning, we've been reporting on the fact that uh, she refused to testify in a grand jury um, because she would not be allowed to have the media present who was not being made aware of what they were asking her for. Um, there were a lot of government lawyers, and, and it, certainly she was uh, afraid for her own safety uh, for fear of, of being persecuted uh, by testimony. She really had nothing more to add from her testimony that she had already given to grand juries relating to the, the disclosures in 2010, for which she, she served many, many years. She was originally sentenced to 35. That sentence was commuted by Obama, but she is again in prison. Uh, she ended up in... 
uh, whatever the grand jury's equivalent of solitary confinement, I forget what they call it, um, but it's, she was essentially in solitary confinement for uh, just under a month. Uh, she was released about a week and a half ago uh, in relation to this. So uh, all of this is kind of coming to a head. Uh, not totally related, but very similar case would be Edward Snowden. We'll see uh, if there are attempts made uh, to bring him in, but it is essentially an unrelated Okay, so um, we will be keeping an eye on Julian Assange, uh, the case against Julian Assange. There's an interesting, uh, there's been a live stream that's been going on for quite a while, the Unity 4J. Uh, check out the Unity 4J live stream. A bunch of uh, supporters of Julian Assange and supporters of the free press. Uh, that uh, you know, Kim.com is one of the more famous people that is a part of that group. Uh, doing some really interesting uh work of keeping people informed as to what are the charges that are coming against them, how is this an assault on press freedoms, and what are the implications of this. This is a huge deal, and this is the kind of thing that, again, uh, Jen Robinson, uh, his lawyer, may, means is right. Basically, this, this precedent is you're not allowed to be critical of the United States, or somehow, somehow you're a traitor, and you're violating the Espionage Act, and conspiring to blah, 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 blah. The U.S. is mad. The U.S. is mad that Julian Assange exposed their secrets of their wrongdoing, of their illegality. That's what this is about. Peace, everyone. Let's do what we can to build.